Uh, my name is Dennis Combites. I'm the CEO of STEM Learning Lab. And I'd like to talk to you for the next 10 minutes about the impact that robotics is going to have on our future and what we need to do as an education to prepare for it. So what I'd like to do is to start by getting a quick poll of the audience and finding out who here feels that they have a strong understanding of the impact that robotics will have. Okay, I got a, a few hands. That's, that's, that's pretty typical to what I see normally. Um, I've spent the last two years traveling across North America. I've spoken with probably 4,500 students, 3,500 educators. And what I find is that, generally speaking, we're largely unaware of this massive transition that is approaching. I believe it's going to be the largest workforce transition in the history of mankind, and we're just not aware of what's coming. So what I'd like to do is talk about a few robotic technologies that are going to have a big impact over the coming decade and see what your guys' knowledge is about those. Uh, the self-driving car. People know about the self-driving car? Can I see some hands? Okay, lots of people do. And when that's, that's the most common robotic technology or new robotic technology that people know about. And when I ask people about the implications of self-driving cars, I often hear back things like, you know, less traffic congestion. True. Uh, older people will be able to get around. True. Uh, less cars on the road because we wouldn't all need to have two cars or three cars per family because the cars can drive themselves. Um, all of those things are true. I hear things like, I enjoy driving, I don't want a car to drive me around. Those are all true implications, but they're societal implications. And I want to think for a second about the economic implications of self-driving cars. Because if we have self-driving cars, do we need cab drivers, truck drivers, bus drivers? Those are all jobs that are at risk of being eliminated over the coming decade. And that's just one technology. Uh, who here is aware of the customer service robots being tested in the USA in Lowe's stores? A few hands there. Awesome. Um, these robots stand about five feet tall. They know where all the merchandise is in the store. They can greet you by, you know, by, well, they could be, greet you by name with facial recognition. But they can uh, greet you when you walk in the store. They can say, what are you looking for? They've got 3D scanners so that you can hold up a screw and say, I'm looking for this. They could say, oh, that's a wood screw. I know where those are. Come with me. Uh, so they're pretty impressive. And they've been testing them for about a year and a half now. And when they launched, they were bilingual, now they're trilingual. So once these robots are ready for, you know, for prime time, will they be in just one Lowe's store or will they be in, used in every Lowe's store? Every Lowe's store. If they're in every Lowe's store, will they be in the Home Depots? Yes. The Walmarts, Costcos, Best Buys. And from there, will they also move into the shopping malls? Yes. So these robots will have an impact on our retail workforce as well. Uh, anybody heard of robotic chefs? A few people? Okay. Uh, do people here know that there are, there's a hotel in Japan that's being run by 10 people and the rest of the hotel is being serviced by robots? We've got robotic coffee shops in Europe and these are just the beginning. Has anyone been into a McDonald's and done the self-serve ordering? Yeah, lots of people there. All of these technologies and more like them are coming very rapidly and over the next 10 years what we're going to see is they're going to have a significant impact on the workforce. Uh, and when I say significant, I mean really significant. Some of the forecasts, uh, brace yourselves, these aren't great forecasts. In the next five years, it's expected that uh, robotic technology and new technology will take away 90 to 95 million jobs globally, with 20% of those people becoming permanently unemployed. Right? That's a staggering, staggering statistic. Within North America, the expectation is that within the next 15 to 20 years, we could see 45% of jobs eliminated. You know, so the, you know, the, that, that, that works out to 65 million people, incidentally. Uh, so what we have to do is be aware of these changes that are coming, and they're going to, they're going to have a particular pattern. And so, but it's not all bad news, because while there's you know, millions of jobs being eliminated, there's millions of new jobs coming. We just have to make sure that our kids have the skills necessary to take these new jobs. We can't be graduating students from our high schools that are going to end up in this pool because they lack the correct skills. You know, we've, we're going to see over the coming decade, you know, new innovation in medicine and space exploration and agriculture in every industry, but we just have to make sure we've got the correct skills. And when I've talked to educators historically, what I find is that there is an overwhelming agreement and understanding that we are going to need more roboticists in the future, but that's kind of where the understanding stops. And while that's definitely true, there's a larger truth, I think, and that is that all of our students need to have robotics literacy moving forward. Uh, I like to, to do an analogy between the computer industry 
and the robotics industry. If we think back to the 1980s, the computer industry operated as a bit of a silo industry. It was really hard to program, not many people doing it, and so you had a bunch of programmers that'd get together and they'd make a, you know, an application for the banking industry, uh, or they'd make an application for medicine. But it really operated as a silo. And if we fast forward to today, what we see is that we all use computers every day, and now computers are a layer across every industry. Right? And that's the journey that robotics is, is on the brink of taking. And it's important that we understand that it's not just that we're going to need more roboticists. We need people that understand robotics in all industries. And within the computer industry, it took us 30 years to go from, you know, from the 80s to today to get to the point where, we've, we're all, you know, we're all, where we all need computer literacy. But it won't take robotics that long. It'll take us five to seven years, maybe 10. Uh, and the reason for that is the growth of the computer industry you know, had the requirement of shrinking a mainframe from the size of this room down to fitting in your pocket. The technology exists today for the robotics industry to move very rapidly, and it will. One of the other aspects is that programming used to be very difficult for, you know, for computers, and now that's become much easier. So now we're seeing many more applications. And what I can tell you is that the robotics industry uh, will move very quickly as well. I've done a number of demonstrations in schools, and within an hour, I've got fifth graders programming robots with advanced features like speech recognition, visual tracking, robots that can recognize who the students are, greet them by name. Those things exist now, and students as young as the fifth grade can be programming them. So think about forecasting that forward five or 10 years, 15 years, and what that looks like in society. It's gonna be, it's gonna be very rapid, rapid transitions, and it's going to affect all industries. So I'd like to give a couple examples of that to help people to understand. Uh, so about nine months ago, I was in New York City giving a presentation on the impact that robotics would have on the workforce uh, at a robotics conference called Robo Universe, pure, pure robotics conference. I was surprised that over the two days, I met about 25 people from the fashion industry. And so I said to these people, it's a robotics conference, what are you guys doing here? And they said, if you, <laughs> I got this answer from everybody, they said, if you want to get a job in the fashion industry today, two of the most important skills are 3D printing and robotics, which seemed totally counterintuitive to me initially, but it does make sense because if this is the, what you can create with traditional fashion, and this is what you can create if you apply a layer of 3D printing and robotics to it, if all of you were to own a fashion company and be hiring a new designer, do you want the person that can give you this or this? And the answer is this, right? So now fashion, like we, we don't think when we're educating our kids about fashion design that they're gonna need those skills, but now we have to understand that. Going back to the example of the Lowe's store with the customer service robots. If you're hiring the next general manager of a Lowe's store and you're gonna have five or 10 or 20 robots in your store, are you going to hire a manager that understands robotics or doesn't understand robotics? And the answer is understands robotics because it gives you a leg up. And I could run through virtually every career on the planet and we would find the same thing. People with robotics literacy will have an advantage, a significant advantage. So when I take that knowledge and I apply that to the education space, it, it presents some challenges. And again, I've been to many schools, and what I find is that a great many schools t don't teach robotics at all. And the ones that do are teaching robotics uh, in clubs or after school programs, and they're typically engaging one to 2% of students. But when we take that information and we recognize that we all need robotics literacy, what that means is that 98% of us aren't getting some key, key skills that we're going to need by the time we hit the workforce. So we have to find a way to engage all of our students. And in my presentations to students, what I have also found is that if we start our kids younger on this technology, that we will have more of them, uh, more kids engaged. And also that, particularly with regards to girls and getting into STEM careers, if you guys know the statistics of the amount, of, like the, the gender difference between women and men in, in STEM careers, engineering, programming and stuff, it's 90 to 95% skewed men, which is a whole nother issue. And if we want to get these girls you know, in, engaged in this, we, we need to start them at a younger age because in grade five, six, seven, they're very interested in the technology. As it gets up into the high school, there's a divergence that happens. Uh, so when we, when, we look at, when we look at getting all of our kids' robotics literacy, the way that I look at that is that we graduate three different types of students from our schools, from our high schools. Those that are gonna go off to university and college, those that are gonna go into the trades, become plumbers, welders, electricians, and a third group that doesn't fall into either of these first two categories. What kind of jobs does this third group typically take? 
A lot of them go into transportation. A lot of them go into retail. A lot of them go into restaurants, the hospitality industry. The very jobs that we talked about earlier that are at, you know, that are at risk of being uh, eliminated or shrunk at the beginning of the presentation. And from my, or from my demonstrations and my talking with educators, I can tell you there's almost never these kids in the robotics clubs right now. So we have to find a way to reach them. Now the good news is with improved technology and an understanding of what robotics really is, uh, we can reach a great many students because a lot of us have an impression of robotics that it's assembly line robots. And it's much, much more than that now. You know, it's, it's the human robot interaction. You can, you can be programming robots to have personality or, or simulated personality. You can be programming robots to interact, to help people, you know, that are, you know, in, in social settings, it's, it's just, this is, it's this big. This is what robotics is now and what we're teaching is still over here. And so when I go into classrooms and I give demonstrations to students, I find that I can get 90% of kids interested in taking a robotics class. 90% of kids, and that includes programming. And when you reach 90% of kids, you're hitting that third group. So the technology exists now. The software is easy enough to use. We just have to get this pro these, these programs in front of our kids. So for all the students here today, I would, you know, I would encourage you to learn robotics. It's going to give you a significant, significant advantage in anything that you choose to do in the future. And for all the educators and parents, I would implore you to take this knowledge and information to your schools and spread the word. We have to get our next generation of, uh, of, of society very, very literate very quickly in robotics. The coming decade is gonna be a time of incredible change and with that change is gonna come incredible opportunity as long as we're prepared for it. Thank you.